Hey everyone, I have an exciting new product to share with you today from ST Micro. In fact, it's so new that this Sensor Tile Pro that I have here may be the only one in our hemisphere. So with products that new to look at, let's get to it. Okay, well the obvious question for a brand new product is, what is it, what does it do and why would I want one? All solid questions and I'm so glad you asked. The Sensor Tile Dot Box Pro, which has a product code of STEVAL MK Box Pro, is a dev kit that showcases a lot of the technology areas that ST Micro are particularly good at, and it does this all in one place. In this instance, the emphasis is on MEMS, which stands for Micro Electromechanical Systems, and we have quite an array of MEMS sensors packed onto the board, which we'll talk about in more detail later. The board also sports an ST Micro Bluetooth chip, the Blue NRG 355AC, which is a Bluetooth 5.2 device, and it also has an ST NFC tag. To run applications, the board is equipped with one of ST Micro's popular STM32 microcontrollers. In this case, we have an STM32U585 which features an ARM Cortex M33 processor with a single precision floating point unit. To round off, we have user programmable buttons and LEDs and various levels of software we can jump into. From simply running default demos from a phone app via Bluetooth, through to full functionality libraries for developing using ST's STM32 open development environment. And we can use that to create commercial applications. So now we know what we're dealing with, let's have a look at it. And here it is. As you can see, it comes in ST's usual clear plastic hard shell packaging. In the box, we get the Sensatile main board, an ST-Link adapter with programming cable, and it looks like the backing card doubles as an information card. Right, so we have everything out of the case, and starting with the info card, there's some product info and operating mode stuff on the back. And when we get inside, we find some QR codes for downloading the Android or iOS app, some getting started instructions, and another QR code to learn some more. And over here, we have some boilerplate notices, Okay, great. Moving on to the main attraction. Let's take a look at what we can see on the outer case of our dev kit. Starting with what you might call the front panel of our kit, we have this black inlay, which nicely contrasts with the white markings on it. So at the top left, we have windows for a couple of power related LEDs. This one is green and indicates that external power is connected, while this one is orange and is the battery charging indicator and will go out when the battery is fully charged. There's a 480 milliamp hour 3.7 volt LiPo battery included in the kit. Here's the opening for an ST Micro MP23DB01HP and that's a MEMS digital stereo mic and that's soldered to the board. These are the windows for the user LEDs which are green, red, orange and blue. And these are all connected directly to the STM32 microcontroller. Uh, there's also a buzzer connected to the microcontroller. This NFC logo shows us the active area of the NFC coil connected to an ST25DV04K NFC tag, which has a 4K bit EEPROM. The Bluetooth logo reminds us that kit has a blue NRG LP ultra low power BLE 5.2 system on a chip fitted and the most obvious feature is this 24 pin dual inline socket. Just in case there aren't enough MEMS devices crammed onto this board this still 24 socket allows you to plug in any of a huge array of other ST Micro MEMS device eval boards directly onto the kit and connect to the microcontroller using I squared C or SPI. Moving on then to the top of the case, there's a power switch for the sensor tile. Now the battery can still be charged by either the USB-C connector on the side of the board or the STWLC68 integrated wireless power receiver which has a charging coil on the back side of the case. 
Here we have a couple of user programmable buttons connected to the STM32 and this is a slot for a micro SD card giving the kit some storage abilities. Right then, rolling over to the bottom of the kit we find some QVAR electrodes which allow the embedded QVAR channel to sense electric charge or Q variation. These electrodes can sense horizontal swiping and different tapping actions. And on the back we have some product information. As I mentioned earlier, there's also a wireless charging coil on the inside of the case bottom. So that's the outside, and as you can see we can get access to the board itself pretty easily by removing the four case screws. Right then, I think it's about time we powered up the kit and find out what the default software examples look like. First off, we're going to need to download the app, so we'll use the QR code to go straight to it in the App Store. So we click Get and Agree. It'll start downloading. I'm not sure what to expect at this point. I'm guessing that this will be beta software, uh, possibly even still alpha, but I guess we'll see. OK, so let's open the app and we'll just OK that for now and we're in. But before we can explore, we need to power up the board. Oh, and make sure it's switched on. LEDs flashing. And that LED looks like a ready signal. So let's get back to the app. So this is what we're presented with when we first get into the app. I think we'll just check the about page and see if that gives us any clues about the stage of development the software's at. OK, not really, but we know which SDK is being used. This blue SDK should we want to generate our own software. So we'll go back to the main menu page and I guess we should try to connect our device. Well, there's our board, so that's a good start. And we're connected, so let's select it. And what's this then? OK, it looks like we have a motion sensing app as the default. Hmm. If we tap on... OK, we have a dot in a circle. So if I move the board around... Ah, OK, it's a die. And if we move the board around in space, the die rotates to match the board's orientation in space. OK, that's pretty cute. So what does this reset do? Keep the board horizontally. OK. Right, so this is resetting the sensor's calibration. Oh, and that's the charging cable pulling on the board. So let's see if there's any other sensor apps. I'm tapping on the MEM sensor thing, but nothing else is happening, so I guess not. So let's try plot data. We'll tap on select feature and we can select a sensor. Uh, let's try sensor fusion. OK, let's go with two second time scale and select. Oh, we're plotting. So let's move the board about. OK, so let's get more vigorous. Spinning, shaking. OK, that's a pretty neat little plotter. We'll uh, stop that now. And move on to cloud logging. So we have Azure. And somewhere to add a connection string. And we've also got Amazon as well. With somewhere to add our credentials. And going back, we can set up a generic MQTT broker. Or, ooh, is that Broker, perhaps? Hmm, OK. And we have ST Asset Tracking, which I'm not familiar with. And I'm not sure I'm any the wiser by looking at that, really. But uh, 
Okay, we'll move on. Next up we have some RSSI and battery info. And if I move my phone around, yep, we do see the signal strength changing as I move it. And now we're fully charged. Right, so let's tap on more and see what we have. Board configuration and textual monitor. Hmm. Well, I've got to find out what a textual monitor is when it's at home. Okay, a list of sensors. Accelerometer. Ah, right, it's just a printout of raw data values. But the accelerometer isn't sending anything at the moment. What about the magnetometer? Nope. Okay, the mem sensor fusion seems to be generating some data. If I move the board around, yep, we're showing the raw data values changing. Great. Okay, may as well check the battery too, and we're getting data for that. Nice. I don't know what the X config is, perhaps that's set up for those uh, plug on boards, but uh, no data anyway. So let's have a look at the board configuration menu. Looks like we have a few greyed out options here, but uh, might as well check the ones we can select. So the UID firmware version. 0.5.0 so pretty early firmware that we're running here let's check the info okay that's more firmware information and help alpha help equals no help so I guess we're definitely running alpha firmware here then clear security database that's cleared probably less useful at this stage I guess Go down, firmware download, that could be useful if there's any newer firmware. So, nope, nothing available here yet. I suppose that's the downside of uh, early access. Uh, never mind. Looks as though we can't use Wi-Fi yet, uh, that's greyed out. But we can set the board name. So, let's set it to, oh, I don't know, how about Bert? The board will change name after the disconnection. Then going back to our devices. Yay, there's Bert reconnecting. Okay, so let's go back to the main menu as there's one last thing to explore and that's create apps. So let's pick something starting at the top. We have a crying baby detector, human activity recognition and an in-vehicle baby alarm. I'm not sure you need AI or machine learning to determine whether or not you have a baby in your car but uh, there you go, technology looking for an application. So I'm going to check out this human activity recognition. We'll hit play and there's our board. Hit play again. Overwrite the currently loaded board app. Uh, perhaps not at this point. So we'll hit cancel and we'll go back to the categories menu. Let's see what's in environmental. Uh, barometer log is data recorder motion okay so we've got some more options there vibration monitor okay so what's this expert view then okay somewhere to upload our own apps that's good at the bottom here we have sensors okay and this looks like a list of the board's mem sensors we have uh, temperature humidity pressure accelerometers vibration gyroscopes magnetic field microphone real-time clock virtual sensors and of course our qvar and nfc 
So if we tap QVAR, and there's a link to the data sheet. Well, that's useful, very useful. I was going to list out some of the specs for these devices, but I guess if you're curious, you could just Google the part numbers that you can see here, or if you get the app yourself, you can follow the links. I think that's pretty much it for what we can explore in the app until we get another firmware update. But I do think this is a pretty rocking showcase for ST Micro's range of MEM sensors and the microcontroller as well, I suppose. I really like what they've done with this kit. Even with Alpha software support, it's ridiculously easy to see these devices in action and to crib a lot of the development work that, that you would need to do to get them running on your own product. As you'd expect, the documentation includes schematics and all the other kind of information you'd need to help you with that. And there's masses of support on ST Micro's website. All in all, a great product. Well, that's about it for today's video. All that's left to say is stay safe and see you soon.